Hi everybody, it is Marie here today in the Quarantine Diaries. It is Friday the 17th of April, uh, day 23, and uh, yesterday was quite a big day uh, for us here at Skeins because like many, I am sure you rushed off for the one across one o'clock briefing uh, from our leader in chief and uh, to see what was revealed around what level three was going to look like. And I know for us here at Skeins, that was quite a big deal. We really did want to see what that was going to look like. Uh, as you, many of you know, we have uh, we are still currently open and selling our blankets as part of a level four central goods. Uh, so our warehouse is actually still open and operating and Damien is rattling around there. Um, and so for us to hear what level three would look like was quite important. So the good news is, is that there is actually going to be a lot of freedoms, particularly around online shopping, by the look of it, that it is going to be open and an accreditation process to make sure that you can reopen your business and do that safely. Now, from our perspective, we are already and have remained open for, as you know, for um, a number of weeks, uh, and we've already had a conversation um, with WorkSafe around that. So our hope um, and our expectation is is that once level three we've moved to level three we should be able just to then now open up reopen all of our products back up for everyone to be able to purchase now an update for those that have been purchasing uh, particularly across easter last night the last of all the orders that were received to the end of good friday went out which were the ones that were received whilst uh that we had made a commitment to uh that whilst we still had uh our approval and the rest from that time are all packed together and waiting uh, for that announcement in terms of when level three will be and when we will be allowed to actually send those out, which fingers crossed, fingers crossed, after Monday's announcement will be some something towards the middle of next week. So we're really hoping that is the case. So as soon as that approval is um, being met we're at, or that level lowered, uh, those orders will be hitting the courier and heading out to you guys as soon as possible. Which then also uh, begs the question, you know, the where to from here in terms of planning. So the other side of the announcement was in regards to, you know, uh, being able to purchase like more from online shopping and also takeaways and deliveries for food. I know for many of you, that's quite a big one. Not such a big concern in our house because I love to cook. So uh, to be fair, we've just been doing our own version of takeaways here at home hasn't quite bothered us quite so much uh, on that score but the other thing too is that there is a little bit more freedom in terms of activity and being able to get out and about so if you wanted um, to have a surf you can uh, if you want to go fishing you can you know fishing from the shore you can so those sorts of things have been loosened up which is really nice the other thing though with level three is that really other than those sort of um, concessions it is still going to be pretty much business as usual as we have been in level four so still a lot of time spent at home and for a number of us that is either working from home but there are a good chunk of us where you know you will not be able to actually go back to work until level two and I certainly know in our household whilst I've been working all the way through my husband falls into the second camp and he won't be able to go back and reopen um, our business at this stage. It looks like until level two, unless again they uh, soften some of the rules around medical based businesses. So, which is where we're at. So, there are, yeah, so there's sort of some potential movement in the right direction, but then still a whole bunch of things are actually going to be remaining the same. So, what does that mean in terms of knitting and all the rest? So, I kind of thought. Um, now that we're sort of moving in the next sort of phase, and I mean, who knows how long level three is going to last? Is it going to be two weeks? Is it going to be four, four weeks? Is it going to be two months? We just don't know. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that the government have been doing is tracking um, very closely uh, the rates of infection. And I think, you know, even now uh, they couldn't tell us what their plans are. They were making those plans much, much closer um, to Monday once they see what happens across the weekend. But that doesn't mean that we can't st start planning ourselves uh, here at home. So if you are one of those people where you are still going to be having a lot of time at home, you need to start home because the kids are there and you're not prepared to send them back to school, or whether or not you've got um, uh, businesses or jobs that, again, will not be 
re, you know, re-established until level two or beyond, uh, how do you plan about keeping your knitting and crochet and things alive? So I kind of thought I'd talk a little bit more extensively about this. So up until now, we've been very much about knitting from stash through level four, because that's what we're wanting to encourage you to do. But once we get to level three, you will be, if you do require to stock up on some things, you will actually be able to contact contact us and start getting some yarn which is great news so the first thing I wanted to talk about was actually yesterday with Sophia wasn't she fantastic it was so good to have Sophia on and talk about crochet and um in the flexibility that crochet has now if you're out there and you're a crochet as your primary craft you'll be sitting there rolling your eyes at me going like oh duh Marie you know we've known that for years and you know there is I have to admit I do chastise myself because I should pick up a hook more often uh, whenever I do some crochet I really enjoy it I find it um, I actually find the motion of crochet like I sort of hold my hook like this and I find the motion of crochet very very soothing uh, and, and and from a repetitive perspective and I really do love it um, oh, oh Peter Chats is wanting to call me bless his little heart he doesn't know he forgets that we go live doesn't he that's so cute. I was going to ring him after this anyway. Anywho, um, so what I did yesterday, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I should have, you know what I should have done? I should have actually put him on and put him on speakerphone and then popped him on the spot. Wouldn't that have been funny? So mean. I'm so mean to our Peter because we love him dearly. Um, so yesterday with Sophia, uh, while we were chatting, we talked about uh, the most basis, basic of crochet stitches, which is this uh, single crochet in English uh, terminology, but I think the Americans call it uh, double crochet, which is this basic, basic crochet stitch. And which, can you see that with the camera? There it is there. I love it. I love when it's in a tube, the beautiful even fabric that this makes now I've gone and done this with this chunky yarn uh, some of you actually may have actually had this this was I think it was called morning mist it was a skeins one we had this that was in a purple and a very soft gray a 14 play chunky but if you I mean if you've got some warm rocking around at home that would work too a nice big fat hook here I think this is a Oh, I can't even tell you what size this is I've got a funny feeling this is like a six and a half or seven millimeter hook something like that um, but it's a hook appropriate to the yarn that I used. One of the little tips that Sophia touched on yesterday, uh, but I'll reiterate this morning, is that uh, often with crochet you will use a hook size which is ha um, one size up from what you would normally use for that for knitting so if you're a knitter and you use say on double knitting yarn you generally use a four millimeter uh, for crochet you'll often use a 4.5 millimeter or even a five millimeter depending on the stitch and the patterning that you're using uh, so that is just something to be aware of so while we ch Sophia and I were chatting I started on this much um, because this actually is reminiscent of one of the first projects I made when I started crocheting again and I did it um, just size wise just to show you I finished it off this morning um, which fits my cell phone all I did was chain on 10 stitches at the bottom and then just join them around with a couple of extra stitches at either end to go around the corner um, I've just popped a wee drawstring in there so that's perfect for keeping your cell phone safe in your purse to, if you need to track it down um, but I mean these sorts of basic pouches sunglasses great for sunglasses um, you could even expand it. Sophia showed you yesterday in the video how to actually make a basic circle using finger crochet or, or hook crochet, exactly the same model in terms of doubling the number of stitches in each stitch as you go around, which then gives you a perfect circle. But if you created that circle and then once you got it to sort of yo big and then just started doing single crochet around the side to create a tube. Wine bottle holder. Not that my mind always goes there, but you know just putting it out there and that sort of thing makes actually a really fantastic gift you know like if you look at if you've got someone that's going to be having a birthday during these times and and you've got some spare yarn around and you know money might be a bit tight and you, you know that is the sort of that's a really fun gift and it's beautiful and handmade you can do stuff like this you can embellish onto that or the other thing as Sophia said as well if you're a beginner and you're looking at your fabric and you're thinking oh you know as long as it's not a machine washable yarn, um, you make it your pouch 
around 30%, oh, 20 to 30% bigger than what you, you would actually normally need it. And then you fire that puppy in the washing machine and you felt it. And you, that's how you get, you know, your worked felt. I mean, this felting, I mean, this one's knitted, but you can easily do it in crochet. And I've done, you know, felting in both. And sometimes crochet um, can be easier or quicker to do so I just sort of wanted to show I mean honestly I think during the podcast I'd gotten up to about there just while we were chatting and I just literally knocked this off with my cup of coffee this morning when I was sitting in bed and if anyone knows me as I am at the moment I'm, I sit in bed first thing in the morning with my laptop literally clearing emails and working away and in my PJs uh, or doing a bit of knitting and yeah that's what I knocked off to show you this morning so I actually enjoyed it. It was really nice. Such a nice thing to do. So hopefully Sophia has inspired you to dig a hook out and um, just give it a bit of a go and have a look and have a bit of fun with it. I just think it's so much fun. And if you've got kids at home who are, you're choosing to keep at home, teaching them to crochet is actually much, much easier than teaching them how to knit. Even if all you're doing is teaching them chain stitch and they're doing a whole heap of chain stitching and playing around with those. I mean, it just gives them something else to do, doesn't it? Much more fun. So that is uh, something to do with crochet while you're looking for things to do. Uh, the other thing that I have gone and done this morning, if you've been eagle-eyed, and in fact, I'm just going to go and drop this link in there now, is I had a little bit of a brainwave. Again, just talking about some of the stuff that we've been talking about, and it's this is being driven. There we go. I know most of you are probably already members of the Speakeasy, so I am preaching to the converted. But in case you haven't, in case you're watching this and you haven't joined the Skein Speakeasy on Facebook yet, do please make sure that you do, uh, because that is where I've gone and posted this link. Um, so hunt me out, hunt Skein's out. I have put up a link this morning of uh, basically a, a place for you to list in the comments your go to projects because so over this last three weeks I have been rabbiting on about all these different projects that um, and showing you images of projects that I just uh, knit and I go to again and again and again so let's face it how many ever after cows have you seen um, I've talked about in the artists I mean I I am not adventurous I do I, I will be the very first to admit that I have a tendency to stay very much in certain sectors because often um, when I do get time to knit, if I'm not knitting a specific sample or doing something uh, for work, it's very rare that when I knit for myself, I'm just often I'm knitting for, for well, mental well being or stress release. I'm not actually knitting for a genuine purpose. So that's when I will often defer back to one of these favorite patterns that I have again and again and again because it, it's, it's comforting for me. I mean, it's like comfort food, isn't it? Well, I have comfort knitting. So I sort of thought, because I've had a number of inquiries for people who have picked up needles for the first time or picked up hooks for the first time, who are saying to me, have you got a pattern for, or are you selling patterns at the moment? Where can I find a pattern? Because that's so many of them are picking stuff up. They are um, they haven't knitted since um, a time where leaflets and, and booklets were the norm. Whereas now, of course, most of our patterns come in digital format. So I sort of thought, well, let's help people with the search or help ourselves with the search and actually post up what your favourite go-to pattern and or designer is. So then instead of bumbling around in a rabbit hole, tearing our hair out trying to find something or get inspired, we can, we've actually got a place that we can go through and see what everybody's greatest hits are within uh, the speakeasy. So I've gone and posted up there a couple of patterns. I, I, I'm wearing my pop prop cardigan from our knit along last year. So I've gone and popped the link up for that, um, which is also by Amber O'Brien. And again, if you like the pop crop cardigan make sure you click on Amber's link to her design page because she has got fantastic designs and there could be something that that you absolutely love same again for Georgie Nicholson I popped up Miss Jane I mean for those that know me I've got about six Miss Janes it's probably my number one go-to cardigan but I've also knitted a number of summer carnivals and um, I wore one I think on a diary earlier in the month uh, and you know pop again pop on her design link and see 
what she has listed there because sometimes you will find that there is a pattern from a designer and then there will be a number of designs that they have that sort of sit with that comfort and ethos that you have. I've also listed some designer pages because I just thought well this is insane because I knit so much from this designer I may as well put the whole page up. Martina Beam being an absolute, um, I'm a huge fangirl of Martina's and in fact when I did it I went through and scrolled through and I thought, oh, I haven't seen that pattern yet. And oh, I haven't seen that one yet. So I have to admit there's a number there that might be falling into a cart soon. Um, like this one. This is a, uh, a Martina. It's called Knit Your Love. Now, I will be honest with you, I did not knit this. Um, the wonderful Tams and Cool, who is in uh, my knit group and one of the locals here in Hawke's Bay, she knitted this for me. Uh, she does some sample knitting for us uh, from time to time. Uh, at Design Spun, and so she knit this out of, this is actually out of 100% silk, and some of you may remember the 100% silk that we had in our epic sale, I think it might have been two epic sales ago, it was a filature at a crosser, um, they came in 25 gram balls, and it's, um, and it's just fantastic, because it's very, very light, and as you can see, this particular colour, this blush, is um, a favourite of mine, and uh, yeah, and so she knitted this as a sample for us for that yarn, because we had a whole load of it, uh, and this is a Martina, so I've got and popped Martina's design page up there, and I can't remember the other one I popped up there, I did, oh, Alana, Alana Dacos, I've spoken a lot about um, Alana's designs, I've knitted a number of her hats, and of course she's published both these books here, Botanical Knits 1 and, oops, Botanical Knits 2, and uh, the full collections from both these books can be purchased either as a collection, as an ebook online, or you can actually buy the patterns individually. Uh, what I love about Alana's patterns is a number of her patterns uh, translate really, really well into yarns that we have at Skeins. Uh, she really does love beautiful rustic style yarns, and she uses yarns, a lot of DK yarns, so things like Southlander, Vintage, um, Legacy, Bohemia, all sort of translate very, um, Silver Lining actually, we've still got some sort of limited edition Silver Lining, translate really, really well into Alana's designs. So if you've got your go-tos, I want you to pop over into the Speakeasy and add your go-to patterns into that link. The only request that I have is links to existing patterns um, that are available. So um, if it's got a Ravelry link, perfect, fire that up there. If it's got a link to another um, pattern service or uh, another website, that's out there uh, where they can download the pattern or purchase the pattern like Interweave, for example, uh, Lovecrafts or any of those, you can pop that link in there. Um, or even if it's a pattern that has come from a book, see if you can find that pattern. So a really good example of that is, oopsie, would be something like from this book here. If you find something from uh, this book here, often the patterns are available or you'll see it. It'll say published in such and such a book. Um, particularly a lot of the British patterns like the um, Erica Knights or Vicky Hardy's or things like that. If it's published in a book and you and it's a book that you're using, and a really good, actually I should, I should even see if I can do that, a really good example of that is one called Knitting Little Luxuries, which is a personal favourite of mine. Can't show it to you because it's held hostage at... Uh, at the shop, but um, I've knitted a pair of mitts in there and um, a couple of other things. It's, it's a really gorgeous little book, and it's one I do know that is available in libraries. Now, on Ravelry, I have discovered this now, on Ravelry, um, when you'll see the, the project page that will come up for that pattern and, and where it's available, and it'll say available in, in this, and you'll see the little symbol for, they've got like a little book symbol there with the name of the book. If you click on that book sim symbol, it will take you to the book page, and often it'll be on the left-hand side, and of course looking at that, it's on the right-hand side there, but anyway, it's on the left-hand side of the page, sort of down in the bottom part of the page. It will actually, often it will say, um, view where you can source this publication, so it will often have a link to where you can either buy the book or it will even say um, is um, a lot available in a library near you. So you can click on that and it will actually do, it's linked into a database that looks at local libraries. Now I have, we use this tool all the time. Um, it will go down to, I mean, there are, if it's in a New Zealand library near you, it will be in there. So um, that is a really, really good resource. Now I know libraries will not be open until at least level two. 
but it does mean that if it is in your local library you'll be able to track it down and, and pop it on your list for when they do reopen. Uh, so yeah, so please go and do that. Uh, I just think that for those that are who are new to Skeins, new to the speak, <coughs> excuse me, speakeasy, it will be really, really, it just will hopefully help them track down and find designs and patterns for them um, to knit and enjoy. So I thought that would be something quite fun to do. Um, now what else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah, so what I, the other thing I wanted to talk about was just in terms of shopping and availability. So if you are wanting to start planning, start planning some patterns, having a look around because you know that you know things are going to be a bit quiet on the Western Front for a, a wee bit longer. Um, I am actually going to be uploading some new yarn finally today. We had a whole heap of yarn arrive in literally right on lockdown. Uh, so some arrived uh, the beginning of that week um, on the Monday. We often get a lot of stuff in from the middle on a Monday. And then we had a, the last lot all turn up. We went and actually shot in and picked it up on the Wednesday before we locked down that night. So it's literally been sitting there, uh, not been loaded up. And I wanted to get um, so our stuff up to our photographer, which we've done. Um, so there are two things that are going to be, hopefully, fingers crossed, clear, hint, hint, going up today. I need the codes so I can write them in. Um, one is we've extended the Orb Fine colour range. Um, that's been in the pipeline for ages. We have those colours in. Uh, we've got beautiful photography to go with them now. So hopefully this afternoon I will be able to get those up. Um, we've actually brought back Orb Glacier, Orb Fine Glacier, which is a colour that was in the DK range. We've brought that colour back into Fine. Plus we've added some of the greatest hits from DK into fine and we've added a few other colours and we've sort of kind of zhuzhed the colour range up there a little bit. The colour range was very, very soft and tonal um, and sort of almost kind of like contemporary, broody contemporary shades. We've just added a wee bit more punch in there uh, because a lot of people are using the orb for colour work and are wanting more contrast between the yarns, so more differences between lights and darks. So uh, those will hopefully be going up this afternoon. The other two that will be going up this afternoon will be these two here. Now these are a uh, merino silk wool mix. Um, they are some, it's a surplus ones, they're actually, um, they're both seconds and they're twist faults that we had um, with a, a batch that we've done and, but as you can see there's not, you can't really see the, let's put it this way, it's, it's the sort of fault that as a manufacturer we're not happy for stuff to go out for as, as a client but in reality for you guys it's almost undetectable. So we've put a really lovely beautiful soft print on this one, a blue grey print on this one and this one we've done a sort of a, mono, a red monochrome just um, which is a bit of fun. Now these are great, they, they're, um, what are they, they're sport weights so perfect if you're going to be doing some colour work. Ideal if you want to add some colour work and let me grab it. Speaking of sport weight, so like for example this red, you could actually add it back with um, some Southlander Sport. Now to be fair, the, obviously the handle of this is going is much nicer than the Southlander Sport, but the weight is the same. And in terms of the construction, this is, and I will tell you in a second, I think it's a threefold twist. Yep, threefold twist construction. Uh, also great if you wanted to have a play around with this with uh, the Legacy. Um, would work really well with this as well. Uh, but it's it's just a really fun, these a couple of different fun yarns. They're also in these uh, larger hanks. So they are, this one is 285 metres. And I think this guy's the same. Yep, both 285 metres. So a single hank of this, uh, you'll be able to do um, something really interesting with it um, and don't ask me the price because I have to look it up that's right so hopefully these and they will be get these will be sitting on the sale page when I get those up and running um, but I'll pop a, a link up to let you know that I've done that so again if you're wanting to purchase anything now you can purchase it and as soon as that level uh, lowers down to level three any orders will be going out so fingers crossed fingers crossed that will be uh, towards the middle of next week so even if you want to wait until Monday's announcement before you place any orders um, that will be the way to do that. Uh, what else have I got to talk about Marie? Oh yes speaking as, as we're talking about yarns I have got this this is the and I just wanted to show you this with the colour work so this is a mosaic slip stitch 
uh, tessellating pattern that if you've been watching the diaries and variety of different things that I've pulled out over the years, you'll notice that this has been a theme that has appeared uh, with a lot of my knitting for more than a decade. It's a, um, a, it's a slip stitch colour pattern that I love and as you can see on the screen, it's got quite the optical illusion. It's very, very striking. Uh, this is a cowl, and I'll flip this off so you can see what it looks like. This is a cowl that I have done in our new Nomad. And Nomad is our camel and Polworth yarn. And of course, I spoke to Tom Dennis from Tandwan Court Station, or Tandi as it's affectionately known, in Victoria on Monday? Is it? No, uh, yes, he said Monday. I spoke to him on Easter Monday. And that is where the origin of this breed came from. So we talked about that. It is the most stunning, um, it's just the most fantastic breed of wool, uh, sheep wool. We adore it. And uh, this Nomad is made using both Polworth and Camel, 20% um, Camel and 80% Polworth. And it's just beautiful and soft and it's perfect for these sorts of projects. If you're someone that's a bit sensitive, this is ideal. And as you can see, something like this is very, very easy and striking to wear. Um, this is also one of my other jobs, is I need to get it um, flipped across to uh, Ethan, because he's going to tech edit the pattern for me. But it is going to be part, an extension of this collection here, the Harding Road hat, which is already free and available on my page, and I'm hoping to add this there as well. Um, and me being me, I don't, None of, as you may notice, that none of my patterns are charged. They're all free. I give, I like that's my way of passing stuff forward. So, I'll get onto this. I promise. Um, it's been on my to-do list now for over a month, um, but I will, you know, in all that spare time that I have. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's a bit of fun too. If you're looking for something special to knock up. In fact, I know Solange and Diana. If you're both in here, you both have some of that. Nomad, and I know Solange, I think you've even started, I think you both started knitting it up, haven't you? How are you guys getting on? Let me have a look. Oh, sound, and he's saying, sound is echoing. Oh, oh dear. I wonder why that is. I'll turn that off. Maybe it's because of that. Let's try that. Oh, I hope I haven't been too echoey with everybody. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Lots of me going around and around and around the room. It sounds like a, you know. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Anyway, I won't sing. I'm a bad singer. Um, let's have a look. Morning, everyone's here. It's so good to see everybody here. It's great. So good to see you all. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, thanks, Annette. Yeah, I always, Annette Anderson, bless her, has said, no, English is double crochet, US is single crochet. I always get it the wrong way around. I just, that stitch. Thank you, Annette. That's um, really helpful. Uh, yes, I've mentioned what the scarf is. Ah, Annette, yeah, uh, she's talking about um, doing a mug cosy. And yeah, mug cosies are great in, um, in thing. Oh, any chance you can do auto captions for your videos, please? That's from Jesse Grigg. Now, Jesse, uh, yes. Now, the captioning isn't in Facebook. I haven't quite figured out how to do that in Facebook. But if you actually watch these videos back in YouTube, um, I have got it set up for auto captioning in YouTube because I know that when I go back and see uh, the previews, it's all auto captioned there. So uh, that is how you are able to, to get that. So I am told. Um, do you still have the supplementation supplement packs with one ball in each cover? That's from Helen. Um, no, we haven't at the moment, Helen. It's one of those things that we just sort of kind of have to pull together and make up. And it's because there are now 10 colours in the range and not eight. Um, but you can still just, I mean, just purchase them in a singles um, at the stage. They won't come with the box. But um, if you desperately want the box that fits eight, you can pop a note in the comments. I'm sure Damien will be able to get you a box to go out with it as well. So we're more than happy to do that. Um, do you still can answer questions in here? Of course I can answer some questions in here. If I'm still here, I can do that. If not, failing that, um, if I can't answer it, someone else might be able to answer it for you. Uh, yay, right. God, everyone's chatty this morning, aren't we? Good grief, crikey, crikey. 
Oh, there we go. Diana's saying she's working on her um, Nomad cardigan now. She bought, oh, you bought the pink, didn't you, Diana? It was so pretty. It's going to be amazing. And Solange hasn't started her. So that is, um, that is good. Right, echoing has stopped. Excellent. It went in, oh, very good. Okay. We don't want any echoing. So wouldn't that not be good? We're going to get snoring from the bulldog though, because he's down on his perch this morning, uh, fast asleep guarding. So with any luck, we won't get any courier de deliveries while we're doing this, and then you're going to get, you know, he'll actually leap into action and pretend to bark at the couriers. Now, fortunately, every courier driver that comes here is a regular, and they know both him and me, and they just sort of look at him and shake their heads like, yeah, right, Renly, yeah, okay, mate, we know where you're at, dogs. Mm. Okay, what else have I got today? Rambler. So as you, because I was finishing off um, my little pouch, I haven't done um, as much Rambler as I would like. But this afternoon, it looks like we're going to get, I'm just looking outside the she shed to outside. My she shed, the door faces southwest, so that's often if we're going to get weather. In, in Napier, um, a lot of our weather, like, wettish ugh, weather either tends to come from the southwest or the northeast depending on where it originates um and i look out to the southwest and i think we're going to get some weather right so that's where i'm at so as i mentioned with ethan the other day um i am instead of continuing down the body i'm actually i have chosen with my rambler to actually start completing the sleeves uh, and I've done that for two reasons. One, because uh, I don't like excessively long sleeves. I'm doing long sleeved with this, but often a lot of patterns with sleeves is they have them run all the way down past here, and I just personally don't like that. It's just it's a me thing. Um, I like to have my sleeves probably half an inch shorter than the norm. I actually, and if I'm brutally honest, I actually prefer probably a three quarter length sleeve so I would and I mean this is a good example this is a three quarter length sleeve so what I'm doing the reason I'm doing my sleeves now is that I want to be able to knit down that sleeve and do that shaping on one arm see where I'm at and then actually decide how long I want that um, sleeve to be and also too by doing that it means that when I go to do my body uh, because I do actually add a little bit of shaping into my body to actually do a slight a-line for the you know, the posterior. Um, it means that I can actually fit it over to my over my body and I will fit it into the sleeves and it will be actually be worn as it would. Like so um, and I think Ethan had a good point. He mentioned it before that if you do that and you just put your arms through the sleeve holes, it will actually lift it up a little bit so you won't get as accurate a fit when you go to do that. So that's the other reason why I'm doing the sleeves. Um, and I've just sort of, I have just a small needle. It, it, honestly, it doesn't take long. So um, I've already got trashy tally mapped out for my sleeves. So I'm hoping that um, once I get all my products loaded and stuff after lunch, that I'll be able to finish early and jump in and get on to um, hit those sleeves quite hard over the next couple of days. So that's where I'm at with the Rambler. If anyone else is knitting the Rambler um, and has any questions, because as you may or may not have picked up on, I have actually not made a couple of alterations, but I have just made a couple of um, observations in the pattern. The pattern is written, I think, um, and edited in such a way that there is quite a, an assumption of the skill level that a number of people may have. And there are just um, a couple of quirks in there. Um, I do get the feeling that the pattern may have been, uh, was actually written in another language and has actually been translated. It does actually sort of have that feel about it. So I have actually stumbled across a couple of things um, along the way. So if you are picking that up and knitting it across the break and you're liking how this is um, developing and you think, yeah, I do, I would like to knit that. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm using uh, Southlander and uh, Little Bandit. Both of those yarns I think are utterly perfect. The third yarn in there that you can throw into the mix if you're looking for colours is Cozy. I think Cozy is the 
four ply of this cozy and snug. I can again, I forget which way around to switch, but I'm pretty certain cozy is the four ply. Um, it's it will also translate. So those three are all pretty much identical counts. They also have identical textures, um, but they give you a really big broad colour range to choose from um, for that colour work. Uh, and you know, or you can jump and grab something from stash. And knit, start the pattern as written until you get to the bottom of the yoke shaping. And once you get to the bottom of the yoke shaping, that's where I've discovered the first quirk. Um, if you want to, uh, if you want to message me once you get to that point, I can then let you know what that quirk is. It is, um, but primarily you get to the bottom of the shaping and then you jump over to the first row of colour on the chart. Okay, not the bottom of the chart, which is what she has in the instruction, but the first row of colour on the chart, and ignore the increasing that she has in that first row in colour because you've actually already done it in the written instruction prior. That was the one thing that I discovered. It's a bit of a, the chart and the written instructions don't match up. But I can walk you through that when you get to that point. Um, and yeah, as I said, there could be more. I haven't discovered them yet. That's as far as I've gotten for myself. Um, and that's pretty much me, really. Tomorrow is Saturday, which of course is pajama party with Ethan Day. Um, we are going to dive in, I think, tomorrow. We're going to talk about the... Uh, um, what are we going to talk about? I did write that down. What we? Oh, <laughs> tea cozies. Tico says, the Leah are holding a scrap-along, knit-along, crochet-along, tea, tea, um, cosy party. So we're going to see how some people's progress have gone with those. And I might even dig out my the one that we use every day in this house, which is just in dire straits. But it is the world's easiest tea cosy, and it's one that... Um, it's still thrash this day in this house. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And I also, I think we're going to dive into some stitch dictionaries and actually some fun around stitch dictionaries and what you can do. And um, also making your own modifications in terms of changing stitches and adding colour and pattern, which was something that I touched on the other day. But Ethan, I know, is very experienced in this department. It's something that he enjoys doing. Um, and I've got a couple of really fantastic stitch dictionaries here. And not being afraid to use them. Not being afraid to actually uh, express yourself by adding something, like taking a blank canvas from a pattern and actually injecting your own personality into it. So I think that would be fun. So that's what we'll chat about tomorrow. But until then, <coughs> excuse me, have a great day. I will see you again tomorrow with young Ethan. And yeah, I'll just make sure that we've got no more questions before I go um, hearing Oh. Oh, lovely, Yvonne's made, um, Yvonne's made a nomad cow as well. Oh, hey, Barbara's saying just as well, you cannot hear her fairy friend snoring. He's shockingly loud. I'm so glad, Barbara, I am not the only one. With a bulldog and a mastiff, snoring and farting is situation normal in this house. Uh, and seriously, he's actually, he's, he's been pretty good and pretty quiet today. But man, could he... Um, he could honestly, 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 he is so loud. The bulldog is even louder than the mastiff. It's just, it's insane. Insane. Anywho, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to, nice and short today. See you then. Take care. Stitch on. And fingers crossed for Monday. Good news on Monday. Fingers crossed. All right, take care. Bye.